chapter 14, and uh, we're starting at verse uh, 16. Romans chapter 14, we're starting at verse 16. Okay. And here it says, it says, let not, let not then your good be evil spoken of. What, what do you think that means, your good? Your good be evil spoken of. I believe your reputation. Okay, reputation. What is your good? Your works. Okay, your works. And what are works? It's what you do. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's, it's, it says your good. How can your good be evil spoken of? How can your good be evil spoken of? How, how, yeah, how is it that you can do some good, but it appears to be evil? Because in, in mm -hmm. Romans 12, 17, it says, it says, it says, recompense to no man, evil for evil. But the bottom part of it said, provide things honest in the sight of all men. So how can you provide? In other words, you, you have to prepare or make, like, Provide, that means you prepare something. You prepare and you present it in such a way where it's what? It's honest in the sight of all men and they can't take it the wrong way. So back to your good being evil spoken of. How can you do good? Like for example, when Paul was uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and 9, when he, he had the collection for the saints that was going to Jerusalem. Now, if Paul, let's, if Paul had taken the money himself mm -hmm. and some of the money came missing, mm -hmm. then they would have looked at Paul. But see, Paul provided things honest in the sight of everybody. What he did is he selected, he selected mm -hmm. honest men mm -hmm. to go with him. Mm -hmm. And the way they did it was is that, say if it was a thousand dollars, they split it up between them. Mm -hmm. See, and then when they got there, they put the money back together. See, three people had the money, yeah. and they knew how much money it was. See, what he did, <laughs> he provided things honest in the sight of all men. In other words, you do it in such a way where people can't take it the wrong way. Mm -hmm. See, that's providing things honest, your behavior, your <laughs> words, so they don't be evil spoken of, Okay. So here he says, he says, let not your good be evil spoken of. What verse here? In verse 16 in Rome, chapter 14. And so all he's saying is, is that, and he said the same thing in Romans uh, uh, 12 and 17. You have to do it in such a way where nobody can take it the wrong way. <laughs> See, you have to be careful how you do stuff. Because what? Everybody don't read it the same way. Because what? We all have our own perception of things. And based on the, the lenses that we look through, we draw certain conclusions. And so I might see you do something and think it's evil. Or think you had ulterior motives of something. Somebody else might see it. And they might be privy to more information than I have, mm -hmm. and they understand. See, but it's not so much in what you do, it's how you do it. And see, and what he's telling us, he said, let not your good be evil spoken of. And then in 12, 17, he says, he says, provide. In other words, when you provide, you prepare. Mm -hmm. See, you, you prepared in such a way because you know folks are going to be looking right. and people are going to draw their own conclusions. Right. So he says, provide. In other words, prepare things honest in the sight of all men. And then he says, he says, for the kingdom, he tells, he says, after, after saying that, and then he makes this statement. He said, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. In other words, God's kingdom doesn't consist of that. Mm -hmm. See, it doesn't consist of that. It has no value in the kingdom of God. Meat and food and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That's God. That's stuff that God gives us for our, our body sakes. Mm -hmm. He says, he says, but righteousness. See, God's kingdom consists of righteousness. Mm -hmm. 
And what righteousness is, is right doing. See, doing the right thing. He says righteousness, then he says peace. And see, peace is a fruit of the spirit. And then he says peace and joy. And notice, he says in the Holy Ghost. See, this is what God is concerned about. He's concerned about how we live our lives. Are we righteous? Are we doing what God commanded us? And is there peace? See, we, we got to have what? We got to have peace among us because without peace, it's Without right. peace, we can't worship God. Yes, sure. Because if you got folks sitting up mad and angry and at odds with each other, there is no peace. And you can't sit and worship God where there is no peace. And so if you don't have peace, you know you don't have joy. See, you don't have joy. So he says now, in God's kingdom, in God's kingdom, he says you, you got to have what? Righteousness. Right. In other words, right doing, mm -hmm. doing what God command you, you got to have peace. Because Jesus came and he what? He brought peace. And then he says, joy in the Holy Spirit. And he says, for he that in these things serve Christ. Now notice what he said. He, he. Who is the he he's talking about? He says, he that in these things. Me and you, anybody. Right, he's talking right. about all of us. See, he says, he said, yes, all of us. He said, for he that in these things, and what are these things? These things are what? Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. He says, now, if, if, if you, in worshiping God, in serving God, if you have these things, he says, in these things serve Christ, then what? You will accept it. See, God's going to accept you. And, and what, what's the basis on which God's going to accept you? The basis on which God is going to accept you is the righteousness, the right doing, following God's word, obeying the Bible, doing what the Bible says, peace, that you get along with your, your, your brothers and sisters, and that you have love, love for one another, and then he says what? Joy. Mm -hmm. Because if there is no joy, there can be no peace. That's and right. if there is no mm -hmm. peace, mm -hmm. you can't worship God. Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. no happy. And he says, for he that in these things serve Christ. And notice, he said, now when you do this, when you have what? Righteousness, peace, and joy. And you serve God. He says what? God, you are what? You are acceptable. You are acceptable. See, you are acceptable to God. And what? And approved of men. See? Because nobody wants to be where there's bickering, there's argument. And there's no peace and no joy. It puts stress on you. He says, let notice. He said, now, he includes himself. See? He includes himself. He says what? Let, let us. us. <laughs> See, let us. And he, when he said let us, he talking about what? All of us. He, he said let us. He said me too. Mm -hmm. Me too. He says let us do what? Follow mm -hmm. after the things which what? Mm -hmm. Which makes for peace. And now what are the things that makes for peace? Righteousness. Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. What else? Joy. Peace. Peace. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Those are the things that what? That we should fall after. In other words, when he said fall after, he's talking about what? We should run after them. We should pursue them. See? Because those are the things that are going to what? Please God. He said, for let us follow after the things which make for peace. And things wherewith, notice, he said, wherewith, one may what? Edify, edify another. See, that's, that's our whole purpose. Mm -hmm. Is to edify. That means I'm supposed to lift you up. Right. Build you up. See, yeah. And so the only way I can do that is, see, if, if I'm concerned about you, mm -hmm. about edifying you, that means I got what? Love in my heart mm -hmm. for you. <clears throat> and that I'm seeking your greater good. And so as a person that loves you, and seeking your greater good, I'm what? I'm going to edify you, exhort you, lift you up. 
See, encourage you. All right. And see, and if if you do that, then that's what right doing, is it not? Yeah. That that creates peace, peace, and that creates what joy. Because what we are both happy. Everybody's happy. Yeah. See, and we have that joy of the what of the Holy Spirit. And he says, let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. Mm -hmm. And then verse 20, he says, for me, destroy not the work of God. And what, what do you think he means when he said, me, destroy not the work of God? God, that's just for that human, the fleshly body. It not, it has nothing to do with the spiritual body. See, we, we get in the argument about, you know, me. See, I believe, I believe that you can't eat pork and pork, and you believe that you can't eat pork. And I mean, we get in an argument. See, and then I'm the strong brother, and I, I believe you can eat anything. You're the weak, and you, you, you say, no, we can't eat pork, can't eat pork. See, and, and, and the thing about the conscience is, is that where our conscience come in is, in is that, see, we you can believe a thing, and it can either be right or wrong. But that that's your standard. That's what you believe. And so your, your standard becomes the, the judgment tool that your conscience uses, whether it's right or wrong. Now, see, if, if you are being taught the word of God, then you make the word of God your standard. And that's what you go by. And so when your conscience uh, accuses you, that means you got a what? Bad conscience. Mm -hmm. When it excuses you, that means you got a what? Clear conscience. Mm -hmm. And so what he's saying, he said, for me destroys not the work of God. Now who's the work of God? We are. Yep. We are the work of God. And so how do we destroy the work of God? <coughs> Because if I'm the strong brother and I say I can eat the pork mm -hmm. and you're the weak brother and you mm -hmm. say you can't, mm -hmm. but then if you see me somewhere and I'm eating the pork, then what you do is you say, well, brother Dan doing it, I ought to be able to do it too. Mm -hmm. See, that, that's the liberty. That's the scruple. And so when you eat the pork, what you do is you violate your conscience. And, and me, as the strong brother, by allowing you to see me do that, mm -hmm. I cause you to stumble and violate your conscience. See? And so when he says, for me, destroys not the work of God. Mm -hmm. See? And so what I do is, in, in you violating your conscience, conscience, I destroy you. I bring grief into your life. Mm -hmm. And what, he, what Paul is talking about, see, we shouldn't let matters of opinion, like, whether you eat this meat or that meat or whether you eat vegetable, whatever. Those are matters of opinion. In other words, he's saying we should let our works, what we do, our liberties, destroy the work of God. The work of God is the other Christian. See, God saved him just like he saved you. So we, we should let those things destroy God's work. And so he says all things indeed are pure. He said, but... It is evil for the man who eat it with offense. Mm -hmm. Now, how, how can you eat with offense? You know you're hurting somebody else when you do it. Yeah. You think you can eat it. Right. If, if, see, because if, if I got a weak conscience, and even though, and see, my standard is my standard. Mm -hmm. And that's what I believe. Mm -hmm. And so when I violate the standard of my conscience, mm -hmm. And see, you, with, with your conscience, what you believe doesn't necessarily have to be right. But it's what you believe. And that becomes your standard. And so if I violate that, I sin against my conscience. Mm -hmm. And so that's what he's talking about. He said, for that man who eat it with offense. And so when I violate that, and I sin against my conscience, and then I go and I think about it. Mm -hmm. And see... And your conscience come into play when you start to reflect about it. Mm -hmm. You know how you sit down and you reflect on stuff and you yeah. say, man, I eat that meat. I shouldn't eat that meat. See, even though I, I saw Brother Gann eating it, I, I, I shouldn't have. 
You say, man. And then you start feeling bad about it. See, then that's the offense against your conscience. In other words, you sin against your conscience. Because now your conscience is nagging at you. Because you violated the standard that you set. So that's what he's talking about. He said... <coughs> And there's a scripture that says if your conscience condemn you, you are no, condemned already. Condemn. Right. That's in John chapter 2. Yes. Thank you. He says, it is good neither to eat flesh, nor to drink wine, nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth or is offended. Say, he says it is it's good not to do it. Mm -hmm. Now, look at uh, Romans right. 10. Yes, sir. Uh, one of your brother. No, uh, First Corinthians ten. Go ahead. One of your brother eat that meat and, and start liking that, liking that poor. What, <laughs> what did he do wrong then? That's a hard stuff to deal with. No, because I know I was by. I have. I have. First Corinthians ten. First Corinthians chapter ten. Chapter, yes, ma'am. Chapter ten. Break down. And we're gonna start at uh, verse twenty-three. And here it says, it says, all things are lawful for me. And see, what Paul is saying when he says all things are lawful, you know, I, I have this liberty. I can do that. See, he says, it's, it's lawful. In other words, what makes it lawful is, is that God doesn't have a law condemning it, mm -hmm. making it wrong. So it's lawful. I can do it. That's what he's saying. He says, all things are lawful for me. He said, but all things are not expedient. And see the word expedient, it means it's not becoming, it's not helpful. See, it's not helpful. It's not becoming or helpful. So he says, all things are lawful, but all things are not expedient. He says, all things are lawful for me, but all things edified not. And so when he says expedient, it's not, it's not becoming of a Christian to do that. Or it's not helpful. And the reason he says it's not helpful, because what? It does not what? It does not edify. See, so anytime that you are doing something, you have to think about your influence. Your influence, because we do have influence, right? <coughs> right. And so when we do something, and, and you have to think about what he said. He says, let not your good be evil spoken of. Mm -hmm. Right. And you have to provide things honest in the sight of all men. Right. And, and he, so so he's, he, what he's saying is, is that in, in, in 1 Corinthians, he says, expedient, helpful. You have to think about your influence. And you have to know that other folks are watching, mm -hmm. and they see you. And so you have to reason now, if somebody saw me doing this, even though I know that there's nothing wrong with it, mm -hmm. what would they think? Mm -hmm. And see, your ultimate goal is what? Look at, look at verse uh, 33 in Romans 10. Romans 10. Th this is your ultimate goal. See, when you are considering your liberties as to whether or not it's lawful or it's expedient, he says, even as I please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many, that they what? May be saved. May be saved. So what are you trying to do? See, that's, that's your purpose, is to what? To save folk. Is, isn't it? Yeah. Right. So in order to save folk, that means you got to have influence. Mm -hmm. And so Paul said what? He said he became all things to all men that he might what? Save some. So he was always concerned about how he presented himself to folk. And in verse 24, he said, let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth or welfare. See? So, so we have to think about our brothers and our sisters, the people in our family, the people that we're around. What, what, what kind of image are we projecting? And then in, in Romans 8, he talked about 
I mean, in 1 Corinthians 8, he talked about, uh, look, look at 1 Corinthians 8 right, quite quick. In, in verse 1, he says, Now as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but charity edify. Now, look at verse 7. He says, How be it? There is not in every man that knowledge. And so you have to consider that. Everybody don't have the knowledge that you have. No, that's true. See? And so if they don't have the knowledge that you have, for, for you to take the liberty and, and, and not respect the amount of knowledge that that person has, because what you're supposed to do is what? Whatever you do, do it out of love. Mm -hmm. And you're supposed to be trying to what? Save that brother or that sister. Mm -hmm. And we're not just talking about, you know, the liberties that we have um, in, in response to our brothers and sisters, but, but we are talking about in terms of the world also. All right? Yeah. And in verse 32 in chapter 10 of 1 Corinthians, he said, Give non offense to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. See, he covers everybody. And so we don't want to give anybody offense. All right, back to Romans. He said, For meat destroyed not the work of God, all things indeed are pure. But it's evil for that man who eateth with offense. In verse 21, it is good neither to eat flesh, nor to drink wine, nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth. He said, or is offended, or is made weak. See, he said, so if... You don't you don't want to do do something that's gonna cause your brother to what's not. Look at um, Matthew's eighteen and six. Them. Here it says, talks about a stumbling block. Mm -hmm. It says, whoso, whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone was hanged about his Amen. neck, and that he be what? Drowned, Drowned in the depths of the sea. He says, war unto the world because of offense, for it must need be that offense come, but woe to that man by which the offense come. Mm -hmm. All right, back to Rome. Mm -hmm. So you, you see the penalty. And then in verse 22, he says, Hast thou faith? Why do you think he asked this question? Hast thou faith? Why do you think he asked the question? Why would you want to know if somebody got faith? What, knowing that, that a person has faith, what does that tell you about the person? He believes in God. He believes in God. If he, he says he has faith, mm -hmm. then you know that what? He has knowledge of God yeah. and he's trying yeah. to what? He's trying yeah. to follow God. Follow God. Follow See? Him, follow I mean, isn't that what you do? Don't you have faith? Yeah. Why do you have faith? I believe. Because I believe. But that's not why you have it, is it? No. No. You, you faith is, is involved in what you do. That's, that's knowledge. Mm -hmm. Knowledge of God's will so you know what to do, how to do it. And to do what? It. Please God. Mm -hmm. He says, hast thou faith? He says, have it to thyself before God. Now, why do you think he says that? He said, now, do you have faith? And the brother said, yes. He said, now, have your faith, what? To thyself before God. That if I believe, if I believe that I can eat pork and God doesn't condemn it, he said, have, have that faith. Mm -hmm. He said, but have it to yourself before God. Mm -hmm. 
He says, happy is he that condemneth not himself in that which he allowed. Now, he said, happy is he that condemneth. Now, how can the fact that I eat the pork, mm -hmm. I allow that. Mm -hmm. And I worry, that's my liberty. But how do I condemn myself in the thing that I allow? And the thing that I allow is the eating of the pork. So how can I condemn myself in that? See, the way I condemn myself is because Tamisha, she thinks that's a sin. Yeah. Uh -huh. the, the public the public had to be eating pork. Mm -hmm. So I condemn myself in that knowing that that she thinks that, and I allow her to see me do that. Mm -hmm. So the thing that I allow is the eating of the pork. I condemn myself. Because my doing it in front of her might cause her to stumble. And that's my good being evil spoken of. And that's not, that's not me providing things honest in the sight of all men. Okay? Yeah. So he says, it is good neither to eat flesh nor to drink wine, nor anything whereby thy brother stumble, or is offended, or is made weak. Hast thou faith? He says, have it to thyself before God. And so, in other words, so, it, I mean, nothing wrong with me eating the, eating the pork. See, I can eat the pork. But what I do, I don't eat it in front. I wait till I get home, and I just lay out my home. Mm -hmm. Nobody's done. See, I can eat it. That's right. Because what, I'm not, a, right, I'm not offending anybody, and I'm not doing it in front of anybody. I'm in the privacy of my home. See? And God, right. He says, has thou faith, have it to thy, thyself before God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in the thing which he allowed. Mm -hmm. So the thing that I allow, I allow is the pork that I like to eat. Mm -hmm. See? That's right. And if that's I it. That's it. And so if 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 I don't do it in front of people and offend them, then I'm not condemning myself. Mm -hmm. no. Because I don't want them to violate their conscience mm -hmm. or stumble. Mm -hmm. And it says, and he that doubted, see, he that doubted. Now, so the person that doubted is the person that don't believe that you can eat pork. So he doubted. He said, and the person that doubted is damned if he eat it. So my standard is that you can't eat it. That is a sin. So I doubt. Now, when he sees me eating the pork, and he thinks that he can do it because he sees me do it, mm -hmm. then what he does is, he said, he said because he eat it not of faith. Mm -hmm. See, he damned himself, mm -hmm. and he violated his conscience, mm -hmm. and my good is evil spoken of. He said because he eat it not of faith. And so when it says he eat it not of faith, see, he doesn't eat believing and knowing and convicted in himself that that's something that he can do. And then his conscience comes in later and what? And accuse him. See, and we said when your conscience accuse you, that means you violated your conscience. But when it excuses you, you have a what? Clear conscience. Mm -hmm. He said, whatsoever is not of faith is sin. So if it's not of faith, it's sin. And whatever it is. All right? And then Romans 15. He says, we then, he's continuing his thought. He says, we then that are strong. The strong. What are we supposed to do? All to bear the infirmities of the weak. Now, and you think about infirmities, see, what, what are infirmities? Infirmities, and they got faults. Right, they got faults, they got weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And see, infirmities, somebody can be sick mm -hmm. or, or not as healthy as another person, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. So he said, we that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. And notice he says, and not to please ourselves. 
Now look at Galatians 6 and 1. Galatians 6 and 1. It says, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, and notice what it says. He said, Ye which are what? Spiritual. Restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Consider thyself, lest thou also be tempted. And in verse 2 it says, Bear ye what? One another burden, and so fulfill the law of Christ. And see, and what, what he's saying when he said bear, that means what? Lift up. That's kind of like the word edify. Cause, and see, I helped you bear your burden. See, I'm the weak brother. And, and uh, I think that, that I can't eat pork. But what you do, you're the strong brother. See, you draw, you receive me. You receive me just like Christ received you. And you consider my weakness. And, and what? You, you bear. You lift me up. That word bear means to lift up. Just like you edify. You lift him up. You exhort him. And you help him to grow. And that's what it's talking about. He, and back to Romans. He said, let every one of us please, please who? His neighbor. his neighbor. For his good. For his good. For who's good? His good. The neighbor's good. Mm -hmm. See? Yeah. Right. To what? Edification. Mm -hmm. See, it says, let everyone please his neighbor to his good. So, what, what is Paul saying to us? Because when, when you please me and it's for my good, what is that? That's love. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's love. And see, that's that of what? That agape love. See, because when I love you, I, I love you, and I, when I do stuff, I do it for your good. Mm -hmm. See, that's that agape love. He said, let everyone of us, that means everybody, all of us, he said, please his neighbor for his good to edification. Mm -hmm. See, because when I, when, I, when I do stuff out of love for you, and it's for your good, and then I do it for what? Edification. I lift you up. See, first you see my love coming by, by what I do. Because I show you what? My goodness. And, and, and out of goodness come what? Kindness. Kindness. And then he said, and then edification. That means I exhort you. I lift you up. And see, when, when you treat people like that, you, you do stuff for their good. They can see the love in your action. And then you can, you can edify them. You can lift them up. But at the same time, you can also admonish them. Because they know that you are not out to harm, but you are what? You are for their good. And then he says, for even Christ. And now he brings Christ into the picture. And why do you think he brings Christ into the picture? He's our example. Right. He's the great example. He said, please not himself. He says, but as it is written, the reproach of them that reproached thee fell on me. See, the reproach. And what was the reproach of us? That was our sins. Mm -hmm. Our sins. And where did they fall? They right. fell on Christ. Yeah. See? See? And who put them on Christ? God. God, because uh, Isaiah 53 said what? He bore our griefs and our sorrows. See? So he says, for even Christ pleased not himself. See, he didn't please himself. He didn't please himself. He, he what? He did the will of who? God. Of God. Because when, when he was uh, in the garden of Gethsemane, he says what? Not my will, but thine will. And he says, for even Christ pleased not himself. But as it is written, the reproach of them that reproached thee fell on me. Look at Psalm 69. That's what it said. 69 and verse 9.
Verse 9, he says, For the zeal of thine house has eaten me up, and the reproaches of them that reproach thee are fallen upon me. See? So he says, The zeal of, of, of God's house, mm -hmm. see, fell on him, has eaten me up. And he says, The reproaches of them that reproach thee fall it. Fallen, all fallen on me. And he says, even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. In verse 4 he says, whatsoever things were written before time, and he's talking about the scriptures in the Old Testament, he says, were written for our learning. See, so, so we can learn. And how, how do we learn from the scripture that we just read? It tells us about something that Christ went through. Mm -hmm. It tells us what? It says, he says, the zeal for what? For God's house. The zeal for God's house. He says, has what? Eaten me up. That means he was, he was zealous. Mm -hmm. About what? About the sins that were done to what? To God. And he says, and, and we are God's what? We are God's house, aren't we? Yes. And so he, what did he do? He came to earth. And he, and, 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 uh, and, and uh, Isaiah 53 talks about how he was marred. By men, they spat on him, they beat him. Mm -hmm. See, the, the reproach. It fell on him. He bore it all. He says, For whatsoever things are written aforetime were written for our learning, mm -hmm. that we through patience. What is patience? Mm -hmm. Patience is perseverance. Mm -hmm. See, patience. When you are patient. See, and, 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 and what patience is, is that. You are under a load, and you patiently bear. You persevere. You buckle down, and you get under it. You don't try to get from under the load. You persevere. You stay in there. Because what? You know God is going to help you bear that load, yeah. and he's going to get you through whatever you're going through. So patience is perseverance. It's looking to God, and he says, and comfort of the scriptures. See, he says comforts of the what? The of the scripture. So where do you find your comfort at? Right. But see, when we are going through stuff and we are struggling, we don't read the Bible. No, we should. See, we don't read it. We don't read it. See, he says comfort of the scripture. Because not only are you going to be comforted by God, because God is going to speak to your mind. Yeah. But it's gonna give you hope. Mm -hmm. See, and then, and then, in 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 our uh, First Corinthians, Second Corinthians two, what does he tell? He said, "Now God is the God of all comfort," mm -hmm. and he says, "Who comforted us in all our tribulations, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted." So, so if I find comfort. And now I know what comfort is. See, I can come to you, and I can comfort you. Right? Yeah. Isn't that a blessing? Yeah. yeah. And, and you notice. And what he's really saying to us is all our blessings come no from fun. what? Uh, Just reading the scripture. Read Knowing what God's will is in our lives. What God helps it. Right. And so if we don't know, and then when we go through all our trials and, and, and we talk about how hard we have it, mm -hmm. and man, I don't know what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. Yes, you do. Read your Bible. Mm -hmm. That's what you need to do. Yes, See, you're going to find comfort and you're going to find hope. And then he says, he said, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scripture might have hope. He says, now the God of patience and consolation, that word consolation is comfort. He said, the God of patience. See, God, he can call God a God of patience, because God is patient with us, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
Because, see, think, think about when you were in your sin. Mm -hmm. God just let you live on. That's right. See, and you stayed in your sin a while. But mm -hmm. what? He put up with you. Because God was patient. Because he knew, he knew that you were going to grow mm -hmm. and that you were going to be better. And that you were going to get to the point where you started to obey his command. Yeah. And so he was patient. He was long-suffering. And then he says, he said, now the God of patience and consolation. God is a God of comfort. That's what that con word consolation. Grant you, that word consolation means comfort. He says, grant you, and see what he's doing. He's praying. He says, grant you to be what? Like man. See, we, we all need to have the what? The same man. The same man. He says, like man. And why do you need to be like man? No, he said what? Like man and what? One toward mm -hmm. another. According to Jesus Christ. Right. So, and what he's saying now, he said now, look at what God did for you. See, God is the God of all comfort. And God comforts you. Mm -hmm. He provides you comfort. He said now, we need to be like man. And so for us to be like man, now what, what do we need to do? We need to be able to what? Comfort mm -hmm. one another. To edify one another, to uplift one another. See that as Christians, that's our goal. And see, we need to do it out of what? Out of love. We need to do it out of love. 